Two brothers, players I was. They play it after the draws. I did the dishes, the soap and swishes. You did the trash, but not for cash. We do to play 30 minutes of game. Zayner. Zayner. It, yeah? Can you, like, not sing? Help you focus. Okay, okay, I'll be the droids. Uh, let's work together to get these powers. Okay. Cool. Okay. Care careful. Careful. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Uh, tell you what, I'm gonna ride around on Gonky, and that okay. will definitely help you out. Okay, here we go. Rotate. 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 You got it. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I need you to switch characters so we can get this last cell charge. Uh, uh, okay. How do I do this again? Oh, there we go. Um. Nice, nice, nice. We got it. Okay, okay. All right. Um, what's next? Uh, maybe we go down there. Oh, this is cool. Oh! Oh! Ah. You got smashed! Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for okay, it. Okay. Go, 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 Wait, did you just get smashed again? I think so. <laughs> ah. Oh, just got smashed again. Give me again. the controller. Okay. okay, I got it. Here we go. Okay, here you go. Thank you. Thank you. That was well done. Get him! Get him! Jump! <laughs> jump! Jump! <laughs> uh, missed that one. Yeah. Can you make it, Xander? Yeah, yeah. I did it! Yes! Okay. Can you uh, hurry? I kind of can't move on without help. Oh no! Oh. oh. Okay, wait, don't jump yet. Wait. W wait. Wait for it. Hold on. Hold on. Don't. I know you're getting antsy. Wait. Jump! Jump now! Right, right now! Right now! Nice! Yeah! Let's go. Woo! Okay. Um, uh, how do I get past this? Here, can I? Here, I'll, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll help you. Yeah, okay. Here you go. Do this. <laughs> Thanks for the help. I think we're almost done. Just, I think you just have to build that computer. Right, building? Yeah, there you go. Okay, um, I did it. I think you have to be secret. Yeah. Done! Done! Hey, done. nice! You did it. Let's go. Well done. Woo. Just a little help from my brother. Uh, Please don't sing. Um, yeah, right. Please don't sing. Not singing. Hey, why don't we hit the pause button and check out my kids for this week? That's a great idea. I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about confidence, which is living like you believe God is with you. Hey, what do you call a confident rabbit? Um, no idea. A hoptimus. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> you would find that funny. <laughs> yeah. Get it? A rabbit hops, you know, like. Yeah, all right, I get it. I think confident people tell more jokes. Hey, Wim, why did the old man fall in a well? Uh, because... <laughs> he couldn't see that well. Okay. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Let's keep playing the service. Well then, I don't have confidence in elevators anymore. Why not? They always seem like they're up to something, but they also let me down. Oh, that was awful. You gotta raise your joke game. I know, right? That wasn't awful. No. Total dad joke. That's where I got it. That makes sense. <laughs> so, what are we doing today? Are you confident that I'm prepared? Yes. Well, today's story involves fire. It sure does. Flying fire. Yep. Flying fire. What? Play. So that's what we're doing. Spot on. Wait, what? We're gonna create flying teabag rocket flames. That sounds like an 80s garage band. That's a great idea. Focus. Right, our flying tea bag rocket flame experiment. I'm not sure this is a good idea. Totally safe. I mean, if you're prepared. And have the help of a grown-up. Where do we start? Let's make it. First off, make sure you are in an open area with no breeze. Step one, cut off the top of a tea bag. 
and empty out the tea. Step two, unfold and straighten the tea bag. It should be a hollow cylinder like this. Then set it on a metal or ceramic plate. We don't have a plate. But we do have a rotating lab table. Ooh, the metal top. Nice. Step three, using a lighter, light the top edge of this cylinder on fire. Now wait for it. Whoa! Pretty cool, huh? Let's see it again. Why does this happen, you may ask? Heat from the fire causes the air molecules in the tea bag to become energized and move quickly up out of the bag. As the warm, less dense air rises, colder air moves in to replace it. This causes a thermal convection current to form, lifting up the tea bag. I have no idea what he just said, but that's amazing. I know. What are you doing? I'm getting a ladder so we can try. We don't have a fire extinguisher. Um, Mom didn't give us permission. Right, right. Mom! Can we light a tea bag on fire? No! Ah! But it's for church! No! But Mom! No! Okay. Fine. Maybe next time. Can we try a bunch of them at once? Good thing I stockpiled tea. Ready? Mm-hmm. Wow. Whoa. That was cool. I wonder what it has to do with the Bible story, though. Only one way to find out. Now that's my kind of tea party. It's time for... The, the Story Before, before the, the Story. Today, we're in the book of Acts, which tells us the story of the early church. But before Acts, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So, at the right time, God sent Jesus, his very own son, to live among us. The religious leaders made plans to get rid of him. Jesus was crucified on a cross and died. On the third day, Jesus returned to life. Over 40 days, he appeared to more than 500 of his friends and followers. Then Jesus returned to heaven to be with God. He told his friends to wait for the gift of his Holy Spirit which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Jen. Hey, hey Jen. Jen. After Jesus ascended to heaven, his friends returned to Jerusalem to wait for the Holy Spirit, but they didn't have a clear idea of what to expect. Jesus had promised to be with them always, and then he left. They just couldn't wrap their minds around what was supposed to happen next. For 10 days, they waited. Then, early one morning as the believers met to pray, something incredible happened. First, a sound like rising wind filled the room. <laughs> oh. oh, Xander. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, wrong kind of wind. <laughs> my man. Oh. Do you hear that? Singes my nose hair. Sounds like a storm coming. But the trees outside aren't even moving, not even a breeze. Wait, what's this? Flames glowing appeared, hovering in the air. Then, as the Jesus followers watched in wonder, the fire separated into tongues of flame resting over each head. Cool. All of them were filled with God's spirit. What? This That's must be so what cool. Jesus meant when he said we were going to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Well, that is what Peter said. But it's very likely that instead of Aramaic, the language of the Jewish people living in Jerusalem, Peter spoke in a different language. This is extraordinary, spectacular, phenomenal. Well, that is what they said, but they said it in many different languages and dialects. God's Spirit had given his followers the ability to speak in new languages. It was pretty amazing. But it wasn't just some show trick. See, 
Jewish people from all over the world were gathered in Jerusalem for Pentecost, or the Feast of Weeks. It was a special time of celebration at the beginning of the wheat harvest. These men and women spoke probably in a dozen or more different languages. Some were Jewish by birth, but others were foreigners who had accepted the Jewish faith. And when Jesus' followers came out and started speaking, all these visitors began to hear about Jesus in their very own language. Aren't these people from Galilee? How on earth are they speaking in my language? I see people in this crowd from Parthia, Mesopotamia, Cappadocia, Asia, Egypt, Rome. As far as I can tell, these Galileans have every language covered. What does all this mean? Not everyone took the believers seriously, though. Dun, dun, dun. They're just crazy. They're talking nonsense. Peter had always been a leader among the disciples, and he stepped up now to bring order to the chaos. My fellow Jews, we aren't speaking nonsense. The prophet Joel wrote, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my Holy Spirit on all people. Peter went on to explain the entire story of Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth was a man who had God's approval. God did miracles, wonders, and signs among you through Jesus. You put Jesus to death, but God raised him from the dead. We are all witnesses of this. Jesus has been given a place of honor at the right hand of God. He has received the Holy Spirit from the Father. It is Jesus who has poured out what you now hear. God has made him both Lord and Messiah. These words had a deep effect on many in the crowd. What should we do? All of you must turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then your sins will be forgiven. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I want to be baptized. Me too. Count me in. Everyone who accepted the message was baptized. That day, about 3,000 people joined the believers. The end. Wow, that's a lot of people. Can you imagine being there with the disciples and suddenly you see fire hanging in midair? And being able to speak another language just like that? Instant Duolingo. But really, how cool must it have been when they experienced that? No kidding. I wonder though, is the Spirit of God still around today like he was then? Let's find out. Remember how Jesus said he would be with his friends always, but then he returned to heaven. It didn't make sense to them until they experience God's Holy Spirit at work. Now everyone everywhere who believes in Jesus can rely on the power of God's Spirit for help. Wait, so the Holy Spirit is God? Yeah. And if we believe in and follow Jesus, the Spirit of God lives in us. Yeah. Which means we're not alone, but we have God with us every day. Yeah. That's awesome. So, what's, what's our, our part, part in the story? story? When you choose to follow Jesus, God sends the Spirit to be with you, just like the Spirit was with the disciples. With the help of the Holy Spirit, you can love God and love others. You can live with confidence, knowing God's Spirit is present to help you when you're confused or afraid or angry or worn out. God's Spirit can give you wisdom, reminding you of Jesus' words when you need to make a tough choice. When you just aren't sure you've got what it takes, God's Holy Spirit can help you do the right thing. And when you start asking for help and listening to the prompting of God's Spirit, your life will begin to change. You have the ability to live your days with more love, joy, and peace. You'll begin to act with more patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and faithfulness. And you can start to show more self-control too. You can ask God to respond when your little sister is driving you nuts. Or when you feel frozen on a test. Or when you just feel really sad. So basically any time. God's Spirit is the most amazing gift ever. Just think about it. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead now lives inside us. That should give you some serious confidence. For sure. See you all next time. Wait, so God loves in us and he can help us with anything we face. Yeah, kind of like when we were helping each other in that game earlier. Except instead of a brother. It's something way better. God. That's so cool. So here's the thing. God sent his Holy Spirit to help you. Anytime, anywhere. I'll toast to that. Mm. What are you drinking? All the tea we emptied out. 
Makes sense. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next, next time. time. That was a cool story. Yeah, it was. Let's think about those three questions we always do after Bible story. First, what does this teach me about God? The Holy Spirit is God. And if you follow Jesus, he lives in you, guiding you, helping you, ready when you pray to guide you. Wait, I thought Jesus was God. He is. And the Holy Spirit? Yeah. How? Well, God is triune. Try what? Triune. Mm, tell you what, there's a video on the Make Kids YouTube channel that explains it. God? is triune. That means that he is three persons, but one God, not three gods. We have God the Father, God the Son, which is Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit, who we heard about today. Three persons, one God. Kind of like uh, water. It has solid, liquid, and gas, but one water. Except imagine that it was solid, liquid, and gas all at the same time. Whew, that's confusing. And you may not understand exactly how God is this way, but if God is bigger and more powerful than anything we can even imagine, is it so hard to believe that there is something about him that we can't even imagine? Something like the Trinity. Ooh, that's cool. Okay, next question. What does this show me about me? When you believe in Jesus, you're not alone. You have God himself, the Holy Spirit, living in you and guiding you and helping you. That should give you some serious confidence. Awesome! Okay, last question. What should I do now? Well, make sure you pray to God. Talk to him. He is with you and he wants to help you. And if you feel like God is telling you to do something, do it. Wait, God tells us to do things? How? Usually through the Bible. Ooh, so I should probably read the Bible. <laughs> yeah, wanna do that now? Yeah, sure. See you guys next week. Bye. Bye.